Sasha Herm. I'm trying to get this Sasha, Sasha Herm. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to type on my phone when. <laughs> uh, here we go. You don't hear me? Do you not hear me? You don't hear me. Hang on. Do you not hear me? You don't hear. Waiting to connect. Ugh. Happy Saturday, everyone. We're just waiting to connect with life coach Sasha Herman. What's going on? What's going on? I hear, okay, so you have to, uh, I'm waiting for your response. <laughs> You have to join in. It says waiting for Sasha Herm. Hi, hi. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna try this again. Oh my oh, word, we did it. We Hi. Okay, so this, I love your hair. Um, Thank you. Th this is number 15 for me. And literally, I had no idea what the hell I was doing when I first started. I was so nervous. I was like, Ooh, pressing that button. <laughs> oh, my God. So yeah, you're on number 15. I wish I had like a big prize. Is there like a Thanks for having me. I feel like there's a yeah, thanks for joining. Um, so everybody that's joining on right now, uh, this is Sasha Herman. She is a high level, I, I can call you a high level life coach. Yeah, I mean, I like to think of myself as I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we're always talking about life. But right now I coach, um, you know, people across from the arts to, you know, the, you know, the, the Fortune 100 companies um, and often I get you know hired for very serious topics of leadership and executive coaching but at the end of the day it's all life coaching we're all just human yeah. beings we, we're, we're that, just, the, the struggle I, is real I want to get into that later because I was going to yeah. ask you what's like the one thing that everybody has in common but we'll 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 get to that later um so yeah so meet Sasha Herman she is a life coach and I've also known her I was trying to do the math today I was like do I know you for 20 years? Like 2001, we met? New Year's 2001. Years? New, New Year's 2001 to 2002. Yeah. 2002. Yeah. Yeah. We, were, we celebrated That's New Year's in the desert together in 2001, 2002. Yeah. So we had a very uh, interesting way of meeting and we went on a, on a trip to Israel together. And uh, I think like because we bonded so closely, we, we kind of felt like we had that connection because we were both from Montreal, everybody else was from all over Canada, and we just kind of had a similar vibe and similar sense of humor. So it just all clicked. And then uh, years went on. I think you're my oldest friend, I would say. Oh, like that I have I'm having hair. heart feelings. I don't, I don't keep... Oh, well, okay. So I also wore, um, this is rose quartz. So mm. this is a very heart uh, connected stone. So I, I was looking at all my array of jewelry and stuff. I'm like, I'm gonna wear my my rose quartz. You, you know what I love about that is that I'm wearing my rose quartz ring. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that's. Would you say that you're a heart centered person? I would say that I'm a heart centered person whose heart lives in a box, and <laughs> so <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's like, I have so much, I do have so much love and I have so much empathy, but sometimes I'm not so kind with myself. And so my heart sort of gets tucked away into this box and it's sometimes hard for me to access it. But when I do, the floodgates are open. So I would say I'm a heart centered person, but sometimes it's hard for me to get there. I'm pretty hard on myself uh, sometimes. And that's yeah, the box I'm part. I'm sure most people are hard on themselves, which is why they hire you as a coach. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of that. Their, 
Oh, yeah. We're did also wanna, hard on ourselves. Did you want to talk about your your background a little bit? Yeah, sure. I won't take too much time, but um, you know, I I grew up um, you know, the apple of my dad's eye. So I'm gonna go all the way back to my childhood. But growing up, my dad was like, way Whatever back. you wanna do, way back. He's like, Whatever you yeah. wanna do in life, you can do it. And that was back in the days, particularly when cell phones were a new thing and like it was the big gray cell phone and he had this vision for me for my life where I'd have like the big giant cell phone <laughs> attached, 1980 style, right? Attached yeah. to the side of my head with the convertible. With a power suit on? <laughs> with the power suit. He wanted me to have a corner office. And because that was his dream, uh, oh. that became my dream. The you know? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, your mom. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Um, so, really? So this was your dad's yeah. dream? Okay. Well, and as a little girl, you just so much want the approval and validation of your parents, right? So he was just, he's like, you can do that. I see that for you. So I was like, sounds as good as any. So that was sort of the journey of my life. And, you know, I was always wanting to get that recognition. So I just was always trying to be the best at whatever I did. And then, uh, you know, I did well in school and I did well in sports. And so I kind of always felt this pressure of having to do well. So when my dad was like, you know, go become the CEO of the world. I was like, that's a great idea. And so I, I did go into the corporate world um, and I climbed the corporate ladder really, really fast. And it was kind of great for like the first two years because all of a sudden you're like, oh, I have money. Oh, I can buy clothes. Oh, I can go on vacation. And then it started to suck. And I feel really grateful that I learned that lesson early in my life. But I, I burnt out, yeah. I think, in the first five years of my career, which was the biggest gift that anybody that could have happened to me because um, it forced me to go on a bit of a like, introspection life journey and I remember at the time like a colleague and mentor of mine said to me girl you got to learn to meditate and I was like what is he talking about and then somebody else said to me you know there's more to life than work and I was like I do not know what you people are saying because all I did was work and kill crazy myself talk. yeah what is this crazy talk thing right and I remember Friday nights after work I'd be so depleted that I'd lay on the couch till Monday like I wouldn't go out for the, like I just had no life um, and yeah. so the burnout was probably the greatest gift I've ever received. Was it um, that you were it, working too hard? Yeah. Or that it was just outside, it was just not aligned with you, so it, like, you had to try harder? That's exactly, yeah, that's exactly it. I, I was working too hard, but I was working too hard because it's where I got my sense of, like, I'm okay, I'm good enough. Like, oh, if I do this thing, like, it's where I got my sense of worth. Right. And so I poured everything into it. And every time I got it was like school, you get it, you hand in a paper, you get an A and then, you, you know, or whatever. Right. So I was always so excited to get my grades because I was like, oh, that means I'm good enough. I'm, I'm doing a good job. I'm whatever, whatever. And work was just an extension of that. And I just it was depleting because it wasn't fulfilling. But I was chasing like from a place I was chasing validation. I was like in a place of fear and it's exhausting. Right. Like, yeah. It's just exhausting. So Chasing validation from your, your peers and from your um, superiors. Yeah. Yeah. And chasing a promotion. In a right? way, like it's like your, your new parents in a way, like looking totally, for approval. Totally. <clears throat> totally. Being told from the outside that you're good enough. Right. Like so yeah. what I didn't have. And I remember, yeah. I remember walking around for years around that time saying like, like I had this big empty hole inside me going like, I'm looking for my heart song. Like, those were the actual words I would use. I felt empty inside. And I, so I'd work harder thinking that would help, you know, I'd get another hit of feeling good about myself, but it never really quite satisfied that hole. And that's about when I burnt out was like, you talk, I was talking about the heart in the box. It's like, I was looking for the thing that lit my heart up, but like it was like, and I would always been a courageous, adventurous person, but it was like barely a flicker. Like I felt really kind of dead inside. Um, yeah. And I think the universe uh, interfered on my behalf. Okay. What happened? I burnt out and I just could not function anymore. And so I remember so going home to my burnt out. Did you, did you take time off of work or how did your body physically <sighs> react? Yeah, I, fortunately it really, it really hit me hardest right around Christmas. So I was able to go home to Montreal and I remember being under the covers in my parents' bed, like with the sheets up to here watching like, wow. Oprah for hours on end, which I didn't realize at the time was the beginning of my spiritual journey, right? Oprah. Wow. Thank you, Oprah. Oh, right? thank you, Oprah. <laughs> thank you, I mean, Oprah. She helped a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, 
the physical manifestations where I just wasn't motivated, right? I, I, I wasn't depressed in that I wasn't no like, energy. I never want to get out of bed and life is meaningless and I, you know, I'm super sad. I was just, just like every time I thought about- it was drawn out. Totally, totally. And every time I thought about, oh, like, you know, doing anything, I just literally would want to like cower away, you know, like I just would want to shrink. And, and that's so that, not you as a person. Right? I overdo. You. Yeah, I'm like right. the doer. And I just couldn't bring myself to do any doing. Um, and I think yeah. that was the universe saying you have to learn what it means to be and to be a human being, not a human doing, which is such a cliche, but it's so it was so apt and so it, so like such an aha for me. It's like, oh, we're not human doings. We're human beings and slowing down and just yeah. feeling my feelings. Like, again, the heart in the box, I tucked away so much of what was meaningful to me or I didn't know what I loved or even liked for that matter. That, so that's yeah. why I just, so like, I didn't know who I was as a being. Um, and so basically it just looked like me under, in bed for a really long time under functioning under performing you know unable to connect with oh. others because i was just too tired when did you uh discover as i know you i can bring this up when did you discover meditation and, and all that spiritual healing stuff was that super yeah or, or that's ex online? well it was when i was watching oprah like that was probably the, the the one of the most transformation or pivotal times of my life where um, I was looking for something. People kept telling me about meditation. I remember moving here and I remember Karina, you sitting with me. You'd been here several years before me. And you're like, Sasha, you have to learn how to breathe. And I was like, you know, doing this. And I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I am breathing. breathing. <laughs> I was breathing with my shoulders. Like, That's not enough breath. <laughs> yeah. You're like, girl, shoulder, you got to breathe. Breath. No shoulder right. breath. Actually, speaking of that, I need to take a breath now. I'm talking really fast. Um, okay. So but, that together? Um, Sure. Let's get everybody to do it together, right? Everybody, take a breath into the nose, expand the belly. <sighs> Let's do it <Yeah>. again. <sighs> one more. Okay, one more for the road. <sighs> well, that makes a huge difference. Wow, that's only three. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was laying in bed and Oprah came on TV and she was talking about different meditation types. And I had tried Googling and searching and it was overwhelming to be like, yeah. what are all the different schools of meditation and what does it all mean? And There's they so were talking many. about a particular, talk with that so many. Yeah. They were talking There's about so a particular many. form of meditation and, um, it just really resonated with me. And I was listening to children talk about their experience and children don't like, they don't lie. Right. They'll yeah. like, if they do it to get out of troubles, not to like create fantasy. So, That's true. um, I, point. yeah, I, thank you. I, um, I really just resonated with me. And, and I remember them there, it, you had to pay to learn. Uh, it's a not-for-profit organization. So, you know, the people that can't afford to pay, pay and those that can't, can't. Um, and so they, they, they don't turn anybody away in that respect. Um, but I had a job and I could afford to pay. And it was, a, you know, in my mind at the time, it was a hefty price tag, but I came to Vancouver and when I called them, I had expected to pay, you know, two and a half thousand dollars, I think it was. And I called the school in Vancouver. They're like, oh, well, you know, it's $1,500. But because of Oprah and economies of scale, we've lowered it to $900. And because of this other philanthropist, it's $775, which, you know, expecting to pay two and a half thousand dollars. Again, to me, it was like the stars are aligned. And yeah. that was eight years Except ago in May. Eight years ago in May. And, wow. Um, I have, it's like, I do it every day. And it's not like, oh, I'm so amazing. I'm a meditator. I do it every day. It's just integrated so beautifully into my life. And I saw how dramatic a change I experienced when I started meditating. And particularly in these very stressful times that we're kind of all undergoing. Um, I don't know where I'd be without it. And that was the start of a transformation of my spiritual journey. My career, as you well know, has transformed and I'm doing something completely different and, and doing well at it and, uh, you know, making money at it, which, um, you know, five years ago, I was terrified would never be possible. So anything is possible. Um, and it's been, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's kind of amazing to look back and see what, how we change. Yeah, that's amazing. Did you, did you, uh, when you were meditating, did you get the 
I call it like a spiritual download or a download or a hit or something um, on coaching during your meditation? Oh gosh, how did coaching come into my life? 52 first kind of downloaded onto me um, through meditation. Um, it just came out of nowhere. Um, which and that's you I'm were writing about... a blog on, on trying different things every week or something? Was it? Yeah, I was every... doing... Yeah, once every week. I was doing something new once a week, every week for a year. And that was yeah. 52 first. And that was in the spirit of actually finding my heart song. That's what actually kicked it off. I was like, maybe if I try a bunch of different things, I'll find the one thing. It ended up well, being the smart. process that was the thing. You know, you kind of made it. You're such a project administrator <laughs> at heart. <laughs> in a way. Not really. <laughs> like you created yeah. this creative. Well, it's like a creative outlet and then That's you organize it. it as like, this is a blog and I'm going to be accountable to myself and which is kind of cool. Hey, hi, Sylvia. I'm just saying hi to everybody who joined. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, coaching happened. I don't know how it happened. I had always been an athlete. I had always been really interested in the idea of sports coaching. And then, um, you know, when I had this sort of crisis, I got I had my own coaching and I found it to be tremendously impactful and having, right. you know, tucked my heart away in a box, I, it was like I was crying for the first time in years, right? I hadn't cried in years. I didn't realize I hadn't cried in years. And just to find, and so, you know, coaching isn't therapy, but it's really therapeutic <laughs> in the sense of we yeah. don't go, you know, we don't go into our, your childhood so much, but you get the opportunity to explore and to reflect. And I had never really done that. And so that was yeah. because it had such an impact. Um, and then I brought it back with me when I went back to work and I had a completely different experience at work. So I was connecting with people in a different way. And my, the people that worked for me were having much better experiences themselves. Um, I was having much more fun. And I discovered, you know, certainly in large part, a piece of my heart song in coaching, which what it boils down to is the opportunity to be vulnerable and, 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 and connect with people in a vulnerable way and let them be vulnerable and, um, and connection. It's connection for me at the end of the day. And coaching lets me do that. Amazing. Um, so you had a big career transition. That's a big life transition. Yes. Um, but you kind of plan yes. it kind of um, step by step. And I think a lot of I don't know right if that's now, true. No? I feel like you were no. strategic. And you're, you, you always have like a that. lot of forethought. <laughs> oh, I'm glad it looked it like that from the outside. Way. It didn't feel that way at all. To me. It didn't feel that way at me, all. Because I'm a bit of a, you know, I like to juggle and like spur of the moment kind of I, like just compare, I guess to comparatively. Um, yeah. But I mean, just like, just if we can, um, you know, align it to what's going on right now, uh, people are going through lots of transitions. Maybe, well, we have an imposed transition upon us. Do you think this mm -hmm. is a good opportunity for us, you know, if we want to take it, to take a step back and reflect? <laughs> I mean, listen, these times are challenging. Everybody's going to react to them differently, and we're going to react to them differently yeah. at different times. And I've even noticed that yeah. in my journey. I don't know if you've noticed that in the last seven weeks. Like, there's been days where I anxiety's off the roof, and there's other days where I'm like, in a creative place. And I'm like, yeah, thank goodness. It's slow, a little bit slower. I can do all these things. I think it's forcing us to look at our situations and um, to possibly reprioritize or possibly all of a sudden new priorities are bubbling up to the surface. And yes, it can be a time for some of great creativity. Um, and for some of us, we're just trying to get through it. Uh, but I do think that it's, it's forcing us to stop and look. And to your point, it's an opportunity, if, if nothing more, to reflect. And it's like, what is happening for me? Um, and maybe it's, maybe it's yeah. going through a really tough time. And maybe for some people, they're in flow. Like everybody's having such a different experience. And to just go, okay, you know, how do I feel about that? Um, what do I need to accept? Um, and where do I maybe need to ask for help? But I think stopping to reflect is, is hugely valuable, especially in times of like dramatic change and uncertainty, which of course is where we right. are at is now. Is there like a couple questions that we can, what do you recommend? Like a couple questions we can ask yourself and maybe journal about it or like, like what you said. Well, I think, uh, yeah. 
just go. Oh, I think it's frozen. No. Oh, oh are back. we frozen? We're back. We um, were. I think um, first. Did you get that question? I did. Yes, I did. Thank you. I think first and foremost, it's just, you know, acknowledging where we're at. And again, we're all going to be in different places. But for many of us, this is creating a state of change and acknowledging that it's actually just a state because for a lot of us, we're like, I feel like I'm in no man's land. And that can feel like really disempowering. Yeah. Like I'm neither here nor there. I haven't made a decision. I'm not moving forward in any direction. Like that's right. a hard sort of narrative to, to be really operating from. That's really place to be. I oh, hate the being worst. in that indec indecision place. Right. Or feeling like you're being indecisive. You might not even yeah. actually be indecisive. Right now, it's like, we just don't even know what we're dealing with, right? So just acknowledging yeah. that, like, I'm in a state of change is, a, I'm in a state. And a state of change is like a state of moving forward or a state of whatever. It's just, it's a temporary thing. And it just, it's its own concrete thing, as opposed to I'm not doing anything. It's like, oh, right. my job right now is to be in a state of change and get through the state of change and, and learn what it is I need to learn while I'm here which will mm -hmm. open up doors for me. So I think the first part is just acknowledging that we are in this place and finding some kindness around it. It's like, yeah. you know, I mean, we don't, it's not clear for many of us what's mm -hmm. next or where we want to go um, or what this all means. And that's okay. Like really just taking the pressure off of having to yeah. know where we want to go. And for some people, it's like, they know exactly where they want to go. Acknowledge that too. Celebrate that too. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think that second part and to your point about reflection is like we've been through change before. I mean, we've all graduated school and had to go into the workforce. We've all left home and gone live somewhere else. We've all done things, many things in our lives that have, you know, uh, yeah. been dramatic change. And some of the things that we can think about are like, okay, well, what did I, what got me through then? What got me through it then? Who were the people that were around? Like right. what kind of people were around that got me through that, that, mm -hmm. that, that either were inspiring and uplifting and life supporting, or maybe they weren't those things. And so who are the people in your life that are life supporting? Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> Oprah. Third eye babe. You know? <laughs> hey. Hey. I'm here if exactly. Talk. And exactly. so are you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, I just wanted to also mention, I'll mention it again later, that Sasha's going to be offering a uh, some five very lucky people, a free coaching session. So check out Sasha's uh, link in her bio and sign up for a coaching session with Sasha. So it's a very uh, generous offer that i um, putting out there. So thanks for doing that. You're welcome. Um, so how do, you, how do you advise people to find their flow and then tap into um, their calling? I mean, it's a bit... Listen, not, that I mean, is a huge... Related to COVID, but... Yeah, well, but it is because we just yeah. need to find we I don't want to tell anybody what they need. I don't want to give people, you know, but what certainly has helped me is finding the one thing and it doesn't have to be a big thing that pulls you forward. Like any the littlest thing like I remember and, and that is a sense of, and, it doesn't and that have to be a big thing doesn't have to be a big thing. And that's the, that's to me, my definition of purpose. So if we can find a sense of purpose or meaning in any of this that's really 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 helpful and purpose has this like wrap of being like what's my life purpose this one thing i was destined to do in the world that is like my legacy like that is i don't know about you that overwhelmed like that really that overwhelmed pressure. the crap out of me so much a lot pressure of, yeah. a lot so pressure. much pressure yeah so um my in my mind purpose is really like what's the one thing that sort of gets you just like the little bit of butterflies or just that little bit excited or the thing you're willing to get out of bed to do and follow yeah. follow that um because that leads to the next thing which leads to the next thing which leads to the next thing and i remember like i got super excited three weeks ago about getting out of like i jumped out of bed to make pancakes i never make pancakes i'm not a baker and i was like okay I'm just gonna, but it was something new and it was something exciting. And I was looking for what are these little things that bring joy and inspiration? Because when we're doing those things, those little things that pull us forward, it can't feel like we're put, like I should do this, or I'm gonna, you know, it'd be really great if I sat down and like did the marketing for my bit. Like if it feels heavy, that's not the right place to be putting our energy. Anything that pulls us forward, gardening, reading, maybe it's actually just sitting and staring at the sky, like whatever it is, that's a life supporting behavior. That's what, that's, 
that's what is calling you at that time. Therefore, that is your purpose in the moment. And it's just following that and it will unfold. I think if we're like, I need to find my flow, I need to find my purpose. That's just so much pressure. It just doesn't work that way. It just, so it's following the life supporting moments. Um, I love that. You know, it's looking for the light. It's, and they're little things. They're little, little yeah. things. I love that. And it's also, you know, what you're saying is like in the present moment, you're staying present and it's not these big things. It's like, okay, I'm going to file my nails, whatever it is, while I'm watching my favorite show. Totally. You know, and it's just the small things that keep the joy and keep you feeling at ease and happy. Totally. Because as you're filing your nails, which is a creative purpose is, our, jo our, per our true purpose as humans is to create. Like that's what we're destined to do. Whatever that manifestation of creation looks like. For me, for a long time, it was PowerPoint presentations. But <laughs> filing your nails is a creative, um, uh, is a creative endeavor, and it changes the way your brain works too, because it's sort of a meditative kind of yeah. activity. And that's when things download. Like you asked that question, like when did coaching download? It's like that's when all of a sudden you. It's like when you go to the bathroom, like you're working on a really hard problem, and you're like, oh, I can't figure this out. And then you go to the bathroom, all of a sudden you get that hit of inspiration. It's the same idea. Like we can't figure out our purpose. We can't figure out how yeah. to get through in transition. The shower. In the shower. In the shower. Totally. Same, yeah. Totally. Yeah. We can't. And we're so, we're so conditioned to be like, I need to sit down and take a course and like sign up for the things and work through all the, and figure it out. Yeah. I know who I'm talking to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know me. You know me. Yeah. Uh, that's that's definitely me. Um okay, I had some more. Oh, so how um how do you suggest uh people coping some hacks for stress right now? You know, <laughs> gosh, I mean there's a million things. I mean, going things. back to what we were just talking about. Hi Jamie. Jamie from Crescent Living joined. Hello, hello. Uh -huh. Um I mean, what we were saying, keeping in the moment, doing those little things that are taking our mind off of the big, the big. Um, yeah. Projects, like right? that's it. I think stress is such a big, it's like, I mean, we all know this classic things, right? Exercise and sleep and eat right. But we are, yeah. and those are all important things. And I'm having a tough time doing all those things. Right. So yeah, it's hard. It's and I'm trying my best too, right? to do that. That's right. And so it's celebrating the wins. I think, the biggest thing I'm seeing across my family, my friends, my clients is anxiety and fear, which yeah. are all wrapped up with stress. And again, right now, there's so much happening in the ether around us, whether we have our own, you know, our own fears are very 100%. present with us, but there's fear in the system. In the collective. And, in the co exactly. And fear yeah. spreads faster than any virus ever could. It's, it's, far, it's far more viral yeah. than the virus itself. And you got to turn off the news. <laughs> you got to turn off the news. Amen, sister. Amen, sister. Um, or manage it closely. And notice when you watch the news, how you viscerally react. How do you feel after you watch the I, news? Yeah, my heart starts racing, right? I don't know yeah. about you, but like. My, I, yeah. I contract. Like I, I just, yeah. I get like, I don't breathe. My shoulders turn in. Uh, my breathing, yeah. like I start to shallow breathe and I go to a very negative place in my, in my head. And yeah. so, you know, we did, it's funny because what stress, fear, anxiety is happening. Like if I can do a minute of neuro neuroscience is that it like it, it activates the back part of our brain. I think we've all probably read and heard about our amygdala and it's our fight or flight part of our brain. And it is usually activated anyways, because we get you know, bombarded by email and we care about, you know, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that part of the, they call the lizard brain. Yes. It's also called the lizard brain. Correct. Okay. Yes. I like that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and with everything that's happening, our entire lives are magnified. Every, there's a fear in the system, all of our insecurities, all of our hurts, all of our patterns, they're all being magnified. And that part of our brain is on overdrive. And so what we really want to try to do in the, in the spirit of actually doing is to, quiet that part of the brain and turn on the front part of our brain, which is the part of oh. our brain that is able to calmly assess the situation, put it into perspective, like plan and execute this. This is the CEO. This is the CEO of our brain. This is the reptile How do we part do of our that? brain. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, you want to know what the super, the superpower is that we all possess that does it in like under a minute? Oh, it takes, 
is exactly what we did when we started with the three big breaths. If we do five slow, big, long, beautiful breaths, it takes all of the blood flow and the energy away from that part of the brain and brings the blood flow to the front of the brain. And so okay. if there's one, well, I mean, I felt different after three breaths with you. You do five of those at a count of four, like four slow breath in, slow breath out to a count of four, we'll bring that part of our brain online. So that's the very biological thing that we can help ourselves do. And then the psychological thing that we can do is to focus on the present. And I know that sounds super cheese, but I keep <laughs> freaking out about COVID because I'm like, oh my God, money, like, okay, I have enough right now. Blah, 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 blah. For me, it's money. Okay, that's what freaks me out. Um, and then when I... Things, yeah. Yeah, but when I stop and I go right now in this very moment, in this exact moment, yes. I'm okay. And yeah. honestly, I can feel the difference. Like, I, yeah. I don't know about you. So yeah, what do you? I mean, I'm drinking out of a glass. I have a roof over my head. I have dinner tonight. I have clothes on my back. Like, this very primal, basic stuff. Yeah. Is there. We're safe, right? Yeah. You've got, you <laughs> know, you've got, I've had like. To, I've, I've had to have these conversations with myself, for yeah. sure, to... Uh, keep the anxiety at bay. Yeah. Totally. I have to, I do it too, right? I can feel the anxiety rising. Again, I feel it viscerally and, and um, you know, I get constricted and, I, you know, sometimes I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and then it's like, so, you know, hey, I Lauren. breathe. Yeah. I, Lauren just hi, breathe. Lauren. I breathe to try to bring, calm the nervous system, which is attached yeah. to that lizard brain, right? And tell, talk and be like, right now I'm safe in my bed. I'm warm in my bed. I've got people that love me. I've got people that can support me. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Um, and I think that's fundamental to everything that's going on for us and including life transition, because, you know, whether you're like dropped into life transition, like many of us are now, or you're being deliberate, like, yes, thank you for thinking that my transition was strategic. I mean, I tried to do it in a, the most comfortable way I could, but it was scary AF to yeah. like, leave my corporate job and go and do something completely different. And yeah. anytime we do anything, even if we're like, I'm going on this journey, I'm making a decision to do this. It still raises all of that, that fear and that back part of our brain gets activated. So whether you're like, I'm actively and proactively and intentionally making a change in my life or, Hey, you've been dropped in the middle of change. It's super important to slow down and breathe. Like if there's nothing else that we take away from today, it's the power of breathing, which I can't believe I'm saying to the person who, when I moved here 13 years ago, was, girl, you've got to learn to breathe. Um, and to, and to, it's key, right? Yeah. It's key. Oh, and Jamie's saying, yes, the little things to be thankful for is key. Yes, definitely. And gratitude. Good one, Jamie. Gratitude, gratitude is huge. Yeah. Gratitude is huge. And that's tied so much to the present thing. And it's funny because I tweaked, I do gratitude every night. And it sort of became robotic. Like, I'm grateful that I'm going to sleep with you tonight. And I'm grateful that, you know, you did the dishwasher. And I'm grateful. Like, it wasn't really inspiring. And so I, <laughs> so I tweaked it, a little hack yesterday. And I said, how wonderful is it that? And then I completed the sentence. And oh, how wonderful is it that I get? <laughs> it does sound, the questions we ask ourselves give us a yeah. different answer. And so Make I don't know. Make it more fun. Make it more um, yeah. Juicy. Well, let <laughs> right. me ask you, Karina, if you were to say yeah. to yourself, if you were to answer the question, like, how wonderful is it that I get to what? What would you say? Well, how wonderful is it that I get to meet? Well, I mean, you're not new, but um, get to meet new people uh, and talk to them and, and hear about their stories. Um, yeah, I mean, that that to me is, is a big, um, big benefit of going through this transition period for me otherwise i would never have even thought of to go on live with people online yeah, yeah. what else yeah. what else you got how wonderful is it that how wonderful is it that i get to drink a cider <laughs> right now i mean i'm superficial but i mean i love it i'm enjoying yeah, this Nick, cider listen right now. I'm it. i agree like how wonderful is it that i that we have strawberries we still have fresh fruit produce and that i can put it in this beautiful glass like yeah you know when when i was just like i'm grateful for i never would have seen the like and strawberries are like they're i mean they're just beautiful right um they are. i don't know it's you yes, know you do. <laughs> yes yes i do <laughs> So if anybody out there has any questions for Sasha, I'd like to, you know, uh, 
give the uh, give the baton to you all out there. If you have any questions for Sasha, again, Sasha's going to be offering the first five people who sign up for her coaching um, a nice, you know, forty five minute coaching session. So she's been very um, gracious and uh, and um, giving to do that. So thanks, yeah. Sasha. You're so, so welcome. Just check out her page, link in bio. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, what time is it, Karina? I want to know if I can ask you any really hard questions. We have tw sorry, it's, it's there's twenty minutes left to our chat. So okay. So, uh, so is there any questions? Any questions for Sasha? Um, coaching, uh, managing stress, life transitions, mm -hmm. um, meditation. Oh meditation God. is for me. That has been something that I've resisted for a long time um i've tried i've had like um i've had like uh what's the word like not sessions but like i you know I've tried to block out sessions for myself in the morning and and try to do it for a series of of, of a span of a, you know whatever uh a couple of weeks and i just i don't know i just felt like it was such a challenge for me i don't know if that if it's like that for everybody else uh, how would you coach someone through job transition? Ooh. Well, that's interesting. What, um, I mean, it's cause it's such a big answer. <laughs> like, yeah, I could tell you all my process, but well, I sign up for whether, session. yeah, sign up for a free session. We could talk about your specific situation. Um, job transition is like any big transition. I think the first thing is like, you know, I always kind of coach it, coach in four parts. Um, but it's like, where are you now? Why does it suck? Because often when we're in transition, it's because something's going on that's just not working. Um, then it's, well, where do you want to go? And that's kind of the fun part of coaching. It's the let's dream. And that's hard for many of us. We do not like to give ourselves permission to dream. We yeah. do not feel comfortable doing that. We're like, if I... The space. Uh, the space, but also like, if you say it, it's vulnerable. It's like, oh my God, I don't want... Like, what's the thing I'm scared to... Like, I don't know if any of you right now on the call have something that you're terrified to say out loud that you really, really want, because what yeah. happens if I say it out loud? Maybe I get yeah. it, maybe I don't get it, maybe the shoe drops. So right. figuring out what you want is where we spend a lot of time in coaching, because that's a huge question. Like, what do I actually want? How often do we stop to think about that? And how do you even connect to that, right? What if somebody already decided in their head, okay, I need to change my job, I, I see this thing over there. I see this other opportunity. I just don't know how to get there. Yeah. But I know I want to do it. Yeah. So the how we get there, we usually lead to later in the process. The reason is, when you think, of, I will ask you, like, when you think about how to do something, what happens to you? It, I go into the anxiety, like, lizard brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Overwhelm, maybe? Overwhelm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just spiral and... You know, yeah, definitely overwhelm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So the how is important, but the how shuts us right down. Like it gets in the way entirely of letting ourselves dream and connect to what's important to us, what we want. Um, so a lot of time, and I don't think it's hard to do this on your own, which is why a coach is helpful. Like it's not like we're revolution, yeah. like you know all the answers. It's just that they're right here and we never stop long enough or in eight, to like just bring them into view. Look at yeah. And to just see them and like, uh, to be like, Oh, I didn't realize these are the things that are most important, yeah. but that's where So you bring that to the forefront. Oh my God. That's where we spend so much time because it's what you actually value so that you can, it makes decision-making and moving forward the how so much easier to go like, Oh, I actually really value relationships and teamwork and collaboration versus being a subject matter expert. This is just an example in terms of work, yeah. right? Or I really value living, you know, in a place where there's community and I can, I'm connected to nature and I can get outside and walk in the forest versus living, you know, confined in the city. Like, once you start to know what you value, then yeah. decision making becomes so much easier. It's like you've got a compass now. And then the how gets much, 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 much easier. Right. Um, and, then, and to stick by the values, I think it's hard. I think a lot of people settle for things that they, you know, that are definitely not in line with them. And then they just, it's like, they cope with it. They cope, know? yeah. Then, Listen, yeah. the most dangerous word in the English dictionary is the F word. And it's not F-U-C-K. It's fine. It? It's fine. Oh. How are you doing? I'm fine. It's like, how's your job? It's fine. It's, it's well, like, 
it's like it's not it's not terrible yeah but it's not amazing and like if so if I live right. sort of in the middle land I'm not suffering but I'm not exactly enjoying either and we can coast yeah. into in fine land for our for entire lives yeah our entire lives um and it's sort of a, and I don't want to criticize or judge anybody I have lived in fine for lots of yeah. periods of my life and it is scary to go to move away from that from fine because with the super so great moments in anxiety and you're not necessarily fine but like once you get through that then the skies open up right it's the just the skies open up that scary um Lauren has a question she's been on their phone a lot lately and she needs some suggestions how to disconnect from the phone yeah um I mean, I don't know enough to know what the particular dynamic is. If it's like social media on the phone or if it's talking on the phone, either way, we, right. are in a, we are in a more acute state of technology burnout than we've been before, which is already high given COVID. This is what we're doing right now is actually really, really depleting for us because we are like, like for you and I on video in particular, I'm looking at you, but I'm looking at me and I'm like, how do I look? And there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a stutter. Um, and then, you know, you, so we're on video so much more. I think boundaries is where I want to go with yourself. Um, again, even connecting back to, and connecting back to values. It's like, what, how does the phone make me feel? Clearly it sounds like it's a, it's, it's a life depleting activity. So what are the life supporting activities that you have? And, one of the most interesting things that I did, and maybe it's a takeaway for everybody here, is to spend a day going through my day and going, is this give me energy or does this deplete my energy? Ooh, Everything I that, that I did in the day. And some days lying on the couch gave me energy. Some days it depleted my energy. So it can shift too. It's a fine line. But, you know, how, like, when does it flip from the phone being a life supporting experience? Like, oh, hey, I'm connecting with a friend too. I've been on it for all day and I've yeah. been on social all day and I feel like crap. And how do I feel after a walk? How do I feel after this? How do I feel? And just I start to check in so with ourselves. Much. Yeah, good one. Because that is a really good takeaway. That is really good takeaway. Is this life giving or life depleting right now? Am I filling my well or my whatever you call my bucket? Yeah. Is this nurturing me as a person? And really checking in, right? Really checking in because our, really? our how do you okay, let's let's go into that really check in yeah how do you do that you want to let's let's do this well i do it like i mean I'm, i feel fortunate to have meditation so i that helps me slow down enough to go what's how do i feel but it's yeah. checking in is building a relationship with your body and it's like how do i what's the visceral reaction i have to this and i'm not talking about fear but does it take it's the same idea as purpose does it pull me forward or do i have to push myself through it Oh. Um, like, it's like, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to eat a meal and I'm, I'm going to eat like a really delicious salad and all of that. How does it feel when I eat it? How do I feel after? Or, you know, how do I, how does that physically, like it's, it's, it's connected to the physicality of it or, Hey, I'm thinking about calling up my parents right now. Some days it's like, Oh, I really want to do that. And I miss them. And I, and other days, and I love my parents, no criticism to them, but I'm just like, Oh, I just don't have any, I can literally feel myself go like, Oh, I'd have to push myself through that. Yeah. Maybe that's then, not the day. It's not the day. And then, you know, you're doing a disservice to yourself and to them because you're not fully. Well, and then I get on the phone with them and I'm snappy and I'm like, yeah. I'm not my best self, right? I'm not kind. And we still have obligations. Like tomorrow, of course, you know, regardless of how I felt, I would call my mom and make sure to connect yes, with her. Yes, we have to all right? call our mothers regardless yes. of how we feel. Yes. <laughs> you know, we have, say. Yeah, we have certain <laughs> obligations. And listen, our responsibilities aren't always super exciting. So response like we have to take care of our core responsibilities but most of our we fill up our life with so much other stuff and is that stuff giving you energy and does it feel easy and does it feel good in your body do you feel like taking a breath or does it take your breath away because it's yeah. just heavy and hard and a thing right? that's such a good yeah that's a really good tip like really check in how is your body feeling right now how's yeah. your body feeling but right now you have to connect. I, I, my body's feeling good. Like I have kind of like excitement. Yeah. Yeah. What does excitement like, feel like? Like, uh, yeah. like a buzzing around my heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in my belly. Um, yeah, I had a great day. I, uh, I did a little bit more planting 
I bought some herbs the other day, so I was just doing some replanting and stuff. So it was nice to be outside, that's for sure. Wow. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful day it was today. Mm -hmm. so, so was that yeah, a life supporting I, or a life depleting? Definitely supporting. Um, being in nature is supporting for me. Um, and I and I tend to forget that. I mean, I know in the back of my mind it's I'm gonna be better for it. But I do have to push myself to get there. But once I'm yeah. there, I'm happy. Yeah, so that's, a, that's, that's a good point. Up, you know, because sometimes yeah. it feels like a chore. But but then, you know, once you're there and when you leave, you feel so much more relieved and relaxed right. and happy you did it. Yeah, totally. It's like exercise, right? It's like, you know, you're yeah. gonna feel good. But the voice that's like, oh, you don't have to today. You can do it tomorrow. Right? Like that, it's like, we have to push through that voice. But that voice is life depleting. Like that voice is like the one that's like, lets you off the hook voice. Like, if you really, for me anyways, when I really check in, that voice doesn't make me feel very good about myself or, you know, it's like, it's, yeah. So I do have to push myself to exercise and push myself to do some of the things I know I'll feel good about doing once I'm done. But I, uh, I'm pushing I past the shitty voice. To eat a salad. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but the voice that says, Karina, like, eat the bag salad. of popcorn. But the, but the yeah. voice that says, eat the pizza, eat the popcorn. It's okay. Tomorrow you'll deal with it. How does that yeah. actually make you feel? It makes yeah. me feel like uh -huh. I'm, I'm like this, um, you know what it is? It's like, I've always had this bit of kind of rebellious side and like, I'm going to do it and I don't care. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> just, um, totally. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like, I'm being dubious or I don't know, like cheeky. <laughs> yeah. But then it's like against myself. So that's not a win, win, win situation. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel after you've eaten pizza and popcorn and <clears throat> watched 10 hours of RuPaul's Drag Race? Oh, my God. Sometimes I feel like it was a way to, um, like, comfort myself. And I feel yeah. like, like I coddled. I needed to coddle myself. But then, like, it gets to a point where it goes overboard. Totally. To push myself to get out of that is really hard yeah because um, we get into that rut right spiral into the, down yeah like the rut yeah, yeah 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 because that can be a life supporting activity it's like i just right right now life is hard and i'm scared and i need to do i need to live in my comfort zone and my comfort like you my comfort zone is eat eat some stuff and watch some stuff you know and yeah. do it together um and one for one night is what i need but often i let myself do it for like a week, two weeks, and then right, it, does, it is a life depleting. Cool. It is a life depleting yeah. place to be for me. Um, well, but I, sort of, you know, I mean, and like, how do you know when to stop? It's sort of like, in a way, like smoking cigarettes, like quitting. Like you can't just have a little bit if you're an, if you're already addicted. You yeah. Know? You know, I think it goes back to checking in, like, and 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 feeling the feelings associated to it. Like for me, it's because I'm just avoiding like being sad or upset so yeah. it's like oh that's what's Definitely. really going on for me and even today I had something pretty upsetting happen and like I'm feeling it's like probably the end of a friendship that I'm experiencing so I'm feeling a lot of grief around that oh. it's sort of yeah we'll talk about that <laughs> offline one day but yeah I just and I noticed I kept wanting to push it away like I was like I just like I'm not gonna cry right now I have other things to do I'm not gonna be upset I'm not gonna think about it and I was right. like oh like, it's just going to haunt me and it's going to make me go to the fridge and eat a bunch of ch whatever. And yeah. so it was super hard to stop and be like, I'm going to cry. And right. Adam was like, are you okay? And I'm like, yes, but I'm sitting in my chair crying. He's like, like shaking. He's like, doesn't look like you're okay. I'm like, crying is good. Crying is good. But like that, it, you know, and when I'm, you, you need know, it spending, to it. yeah. And when I'm spending a week on the couch and a week in the eating sugar thing, Initially, sometimes it's moments of it's really what I need. It's an honoring. A lot of the time, though, it's I'm. It's the opposite of honoring. And what I need to yeah. be honoring is that I'm upset and yeah, that I need help. Really, you you hit it because um, you know, it's like they're avoiding something. There's something that you're avoiding. There's a situation that's stressing you out, that's upsetting you. Um, and I, it's like I kind of trick myself into thinking, well, I'm not going to think about it. I want to think positive. Exactly. Like sort of like putting this veneer on top and then I like, do the same. 
I'm like, I'm thinking positive while I'm eating like all this chocolate on the other side. Totally. So. Totally. <laughs> and I, I, you know, that's so insightful of you. I do the same thing. And I noticed it with fear, especially with COVID. I was like, I'm feeling fear. I shouldn't feel fear. I should be grateful for all of the things. But I, and yes, gratitude will help transform fear. But I wasn't letting myself have the fear. And so I was noticing right. that like my anxiety was getting worse and worse and worse and worse until I finally was like, oh, fear is just another um, emotion. And I'm still learning how to have a relationship with my emotions. But I was like, oh, fear is another emotion. Right. Okay, I'm feeling afraid. And just saying it takes a lot yeah. of the power out of the feeling and lets us process it. So it's like, I'm afraid. Don't try to be like, you shouldn't be afraid or, you know, get to presence. It was like, oh, I just... I'm afraid, acknowledge the afraid, accept the afraid stuff. And then, and then, and then I can actually move on. Right. I then think it comes back to, to being kind to ourselves. Um, like you said, like not berating ourselves, like you shouldn't feel fear. You shouldn't feel sad. You shouldn't feel this, um, you know, be kind to ourselves, allow and give ourselves space to feel the feelings. Yeah. Totally. And that is a lifelong journey for me. I think for most of the people I know oh, yeah. and my girlfriends that I talk to, the clients that I talk to, what we're talking about there is the purest version of self-love. Like to actually be like, hey, Sasha, you're going through a hard time right now and you needed to eat that piece of pizza. Okay, that's what you needed. And, you know, what do you really, what do you, what else do you need right now? Oh, you're sad? Okay. But like to have that kind, loving tone with ourselves is I think self love. It's not. It's not. You know, getting our nails done and all that. That's important. That's self care and that's critical. But what we're talking about here is truly the journey of self love. To be able to stop shooting on ourselves. I hate it when yeah. we should all over ourselves. And to yeah. when we when we do and we aren't going to be perfect. So when we do have the pizza or whatever, it's not to berate ourselves, right? right. Yeah, like, I like, and that's I like hard. You said not shooting, shooting, or I thought you said not shitting on ourselves. But yeah, it's the not shooting like, all over. Ourselves. Yeah. It's like it's this. Totally. We do so, that in our heads, like all the time. Enough on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're we're so much harder on ourselves yeah. than we would be that? with anybody else. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Across the board, like all across your, the board. All your clients and across the um, board. I mean, me too, right? Um, I remember right before the burnout too. People would say to me like, "You are so hard on yourself." I was like, "I don't know what I'm talking about." Like I had such high expect, I still do. I had such high expectations for myself and therefore I had really high expectations of others. But I mean, if we talk to ourselves, if we talk to our friends, when we talk to ourselves, we, you know, like we wouldn't have, we, we wouldn't have any, <laughs> just would not have any friends, but um, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Treat ourselves like we would treat our friends. Yeah. You know, can I just share the most moving, one of the most moving things I ever heard and it really hit home on the idea of what yeah. self-love is really quickly, but this was actually my coach and she was holding, um, she was holding a, a session for a bunch of people and I was in the room and she was recounting the story of her sister who the weekend before had been taken to the hospital and her sister has a very small, uh, had a small son at the time, a young, a young boy at the time. And, you know, on the Sunday she was released from the hospital. She went home and my coach, her sister went over to visit and the boy was just acting up. Like he was throwing a fit, misbehaving, just like crazy. And so a mom takes him aside, pulls him into his room and instead of going, you're pun misbehaving and it's a timeout, she said, hey, baby, what's wrong? And he just broke down in tears and started bawling because he had just been terrified. Here's this big, scary thing. Mom went to the hospital. She, what does that mean? And so he was acting up. And why that hit home was because we berate ourselves like that all the time. It's like, why did yeah. you eat the chocolate? You shouldn't have eaten the chocolate. Or you shouldn't have done that. Da, da, da. Why are you then? You're misbehaving. You're terrible. Da, da, da. And instead, turning that, that voice of compassion towards ourselves and going, Hey baby, what's wrong? And that for me was very powerful. When I, when I'm really upset or upset with myself and I say to myself, Hey Sasha, Hey baby, what's wrong? And I take that nurturing yeah. kind of approach with myself. I actually want to break down in tears because that is just such a different, that is so not what I'm usually saying to myself. And yeah. that's the compassion and the kindness because my misbehavior is, is because there's something big and scary happening for the, the tenderest parts of me. And so I tend, I lean to berating, but that's the kind, the kind voice of, of, of our divine femininity that we all have, that wise, loving woman that we all have within us and turning that towards ourselves as we do so beautifully with our friends and those in our lives is just turning that back towards ourselves. Yeah, I think, uh, I guess that's a practice that we have to kind of adopt. And, um, you know, it's, 
like I had a teacher that said, nothing's fixed. It's always a practice. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I believe that 100%. And sometimes we forget things and we come back to them. And that's okay, too. It's hard to keep it all top of mind, right? It's hard to do it all. Um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, sometimes we fall off the wagon. But and that's okay. um, coming back to what matters, I guess, is, is keep coming back to what matters. Yeah. yeah. I think that voice of kindness if there's one thing that I need yeah. to cultivate and want to cultivate that self-talk, I think because that's what get that that's with us for our whole life. We're with ourselves for our whole life. And it, it it's such a foundational part of the experience that we have, like yeah. the experience of us constantly berating ourselves or the kindness yeah. and the self-love. Like, I mean, that's two different life experiences to be having. Do you use the term inner child in your coaching? Um, like yeah. that's we're speaking to our inner child. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. where like well, our feelings live, you know, yeah. that little inner child, right? Yeah. That's where our feelings live. Oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah. Oh. Our little ones. And we just want, especially now we need hugs and we need love and we need caring. Yeah. Hugs. We need to. Let's get... all do that. Yeah. Yeah. Took a breath before, a couple breaths. Let's all hug ourselves. Yeah. We're wearing our rose cords. So the theme is love, self-love. Yeah. Yeah. It's hugs. powerful. It's powerful. And even if we have people in our lives that are willing to give us hugs, giving ourselves a hug is the greatest gift we can do. So we need to love ourselves. Yeah. The old pat on the... Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, this has been such a fantastic talk. I don't even know what time it is. It's my by so fast. Um, but uh, make sure to check out Sasha Herman's, Sasha Herman's um, link in her bio. Follow her. She's offering, generously offering, the first five people who sign up free coaching session with her. So please uh, get on it <laughs> and uh, get some coaching by this fabulous, um, fabulous lady uh, that I've known for, I mean, I, tr I trust Sasha's advice. I've known her for almost 20 years and um, thank you. She's a fantastic coach. So, yeah. Um, well, and thanks for having me. This was fun. I, I was, I talk so much. I didn't get to drink my like, how wonderful oh. is it that I have sparkling water? That's cheers. Cheers. To cheers. Yes. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Cause it is sip. Sip is in the name. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if anybody is interested, um, the link is in my bio and uh, I'd be happy to chat and whether it's to have a good cry or dust the cobwebs off or let yourself dream or let yourself vent. Um, I'm willing to take it all. So feel free to reach out. Yeah, you've got good shoulders to cry on. I can take it. Yeah, I can take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, is that it? Are we done? Is, or is it like, do we have any questions? Counting down from a minute. It's counting down from a minute oh, and 15 so we're seconds. Done. Like it went two minutes left. so fast. Okay, quickly, Karina, what are you grateful for? Oh, well, I'm definitely grateful that I am safe. I have a roof over my head. I have people who love me around me. How about you? <laughs> uh, they're all cheering outside right now. So I'm grateful yeah. that I live somewhere where people are cheering. Um, I'm grateful that we got to do this. This is such a cool way to evolve, like for our friend, this is a new form for our friendship. I'm grateful for everybody who stuck around uh, for an hour to listen yes, to us chat. Yes, everyone. Yeah. And I'm grateful that it's, tomorrow I get to do this new breath work thing. I'm like scared about oh. this. I'm doing a breath work thing and that I'm, I, that I'm working on a creative project right now that like lets me get into flow and there's no pressure on it. And it's just, it's like art. I'm basically awesome. doing art and that makes me really oh, happy. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Connecting so. with art. Oh I my think God. a lot of people think that they're not creative enough or artistic enough to do art but i yeah. i say oh, i'm doing gosh. it on, i'm doing it on powerpoint it's an art project on powerpoint so it's not like i'm a hey. painter or a drawer but it's like so i'm using color it's express it's, it's an expression of me. people out there you know express your creativity on some powerpoint do you it. know who would have thought but it's working for me so yeah well this has been so lovely it has it's gonna cut us off in, in a few seconds so okay i'm gonna give you a kiss love Thank to you, you and so love to everybody much. bye Thanks lady for joining and Take don't forget to check out uh, Sasha's link in her bio for free coaching. Bye. Bye. Thanks everyone for joining. This has been awesome. I was so